You're listening to Hot Sauce Sports with Mo Cohen, PZ Delarisi, and Terry Tam. I now know that I'm on with a spy, depending on who's uh, you know who's the, who's the captain of this ship. That's probably a bad thing if this podcast is supposed to go viral, isn't it? Cordero Patterson uh, like grabbing some shanks, uh, gentlemen here, uh, and he quote and I quote, "I'm a grown man. I don't need nobody blank and blank in my balls, my face." <laughs> in my teenage years, I'd get back from high school, I'd smash two pizza pockets. Carmelo Anthony never learned you can't live life just smashing pizza pockets. Because he lost a, a double bet, uh, what I did is I cut an jalapeno, a jalapeno in half, and I filled it with hot sauce. So he's going to have to slip this down. Why are you, you give me a fucking banana, dude? I'm not eating a banana. I'll just fucking, I'll rather piss in my mouth than eat this. Okay, so there we go. Stop stalling. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Now, here are your hosts, Mo, Terry, and PZ. Welcome everyone, you were listening to and perhaps watching Asa Sports. Mo Khan has been arrested yeah. by a large kangaroo. He's gone. I am Peace Del Riz. I am here with Terry Tam. How's it going, buddy? It's good that we redid that because before I said Mo Khan was dead. Yeah, I know. That was yeah. really, that was really he's got dark. Really he's good. alive and well. He's yeah, alive he's and alive well. well. We worked with him on the weekend, actually. Yeah, yeah we saw him. We, uh, we did our live broadcast of uh, Flag Plus Football. Yes. That was fun. You actually you didn't work. You were uh, you played. I was playing and we yeah. lost. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it is unfortunate. Uh, I was secretly happy you lost because <laughs> uh, I didn't get a chance to play in the finals. Ah, that's a good point. So does that make me a bad person? Yes, it does. Absolutely. I I apologize. Uh, a man who should apologize is uh, the always late Eagle and Master Control, latest producer in the world. Latest. I mean, I do have an actual job. Yeah, as yeah. opposed to me where I don't, yeah. and you guys that. I mean, uh, you do. You just finished early. Yeah. And the man who is actually uh, mad, upset with Eagle is our producer, Duke. I'm not mad at you. He looks so mad. You look very mad. I just want to get the fuck out of here. You're, just you're mad so in mad you're the opposite of Tupac right You're now. just mad in general because you're horrible at efficiency. So you sure, know how, like, whatever. when you're <laughs> hangry, it's because you're hungry and angry? Yeah. What happens when you're, like, time constrained and angry? Tangry. You're tangry? Con- you're, constipa- you're, tangry. you're constipated. You're time angry. Well, yeah, time what's, what's, uh, what's interesting is, so we're going to lose Duke. Yes, uh, in, half in about hour. twenty minutes. Twenty, nineteen. Uh, well, Somehow, I don't hour. think we will. Legally binding. Um, but what's interesting is <laughs> 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 sounds. Murphy's Law today. With everything's broken. What's interesting is uh, is that he hates plans. He hates directions. He hates questions. His wife often tells me this. And I said, well, that's just like the basis of human conversation. What do you mean you hate directions? I fucking hate directions. Don't tell me where I'm going. Okay, but how do you <laughs> know where you're going? I don't. I never do. And I just don't want to know. He that's just like leaves really ex- early. That's some existential <laughs> shit right there. He just leaves early for everything. So he doesn't like questions. He doesn't like what else? Directions. Directions. I know that. And there was another one. Uh, questions. Plans? Plans. 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 Like you don't like planning ahead of time. No, I don't like any of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. Uh, I that's just want to be left alone. Uh, man, how do you, who do you got to kill to get Elon Manning's job security? Did you guys see this? Elon Manning uh, was uh, announced as the starting quarterback for the Giants. Yeah. And Mara said it would be best for us if Eli starts all 16 games. I kind of agree with him. I mean, only because you drafted Daniel Jones. <laughs> I didn't draft him. Not you. Yeah. I'm saying only because they drafted Daniel That's Jones. it. Yeah, exactly. But it, you draft him. I, I don't Did think you, you think that I thought you drafted Daniel yeah. Jones. Yeah, I thought you were making a joke. Like, like in my fantasy league, I'm like, no, I didn't do my draft yet. <laughs> right. And I wouldn't draft Daniel Jones. No, <laughs> uh, no I, I think that you know, giving him time to you know to learn the NFL, I think it's gonna it's gonna do wonders. Oh, I get that. I just the leash is so short with all these rookie quarterbacks. But that's the thing is that with, no, the leash isn't short with Daniel Jones. The leash is probably Sorry, short with, with Eli. The Manning. leash is short to get the f- the. That's the it. Exactly. Eli in. Manning. As soon as he gets, he makes one mistake. I think they're gonna put Daniel Jones in. And like especially in, in a town that you got the New York media, New York media has always been sort of hot and cold with Eli Manning. Um, it makes you wonder, but it, it just it's Im- it's amazing that the dude looks he's aged worse than I he think looks anyone. bad. Huh? It, it, the game, it, it's falling apart. He went from thirty to forty really quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. in like a year. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't even uh, his face is like droopy. Mm. He's got old man ball face. Yeah, he needed to get some of Peyton's magical drugs. Yeah, he has allowed like him to come back to the NFL. Yeah, he has the the cheeks that you get your your grandfather gets when he gets really old. I've never seen my grandfather's ass cheeks. And with that, no, I'm talking about his face cheeks. The news. Yes, Terry, <laughs> I got that. We're off to me, man. <laughs> Uh, 
day, it's been a week, and during the week, there's nothing news. happens. There's not much news. <laughs> nothing this happens. Is the worst. It's the end of the episode, and Duke can go home happy. Um, nice. If you want to skip this episode, this is a good one, but you should still watch, like, and subscribe. No, you at should all times. watch and see how we're going to squirm and try and make this boring ass news mm. interesting. Dak Prescott says 30 million is not enough, but 40 million would be enough. 40 million would be Lots great. Lots of millions is the story. You know, I kind of disagree with him. I don't think that 40 million would be great. 50 million would be better. Yeah. 60 would be even, even better. better than that. I like that this only works in, in like 10, <laughs> like, like <laughs> 10 million at a time. But I don't, so I think that it's just probably a negotiation tactic. They're going to come at 34, 35 ish. We had this conversation off air. He's not worth that amount of money. No. It's just the well, market the is market's dictating dictate that value. value. Yeah, exactly. Everyone is worth what the market will pay. And Unless you're that. And so, out. like, no, not even actually, because statistically, he's. What does the draft class look like? Statistically, he's year? better than people like to give credit for yeah. but he's also not great like he's a good quarterback he's fine he's fine with a lot of weapons around him and it's improved over the past couple of yeah. seasons you're asking quarterbacks for the drafting season yeah i got a couple there's uh two of tagovola there's four good oh. there's four first rounders okay so the cowboys aren't going to tank so they're not there's gonna also justin well. herbert too yeah justin, justin herbert there's uh Clemson, jake from right? jake from from georgia jake from from georgia and there's uh, another one um I just felt like uh, DJ Khaled. Malik Henry from uh, Last Chance U. Oh, there's another one. There's though. Nate Stanley <laughs> from Iowa. There's also... Oh, no. Sunshine's not this year. There's Jacob, e- there's Jacob Eason. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I was gonna say Drew Locke because I feel like Drew Locke, I've always been waiting for him to get into the draft. Like, I feel like he's been a, a senior for like four years. He basically... He, he's, uh, he's been playing as long as Eli Manning. Yeah. Like I, I feel like Drew Locke is the, um, I guess Eli, yeah, the Eli Manning because you feel like you've never, you, you always felt that he was retired, but he wasn't. Yeah, you know, yeah, like he was playing back when Danny Werfel was playing, right? Like he's like the guy. old Brad Johnson. You yeah, know? you're like, oh wait, he's still here. All right, All right, <laughs> try him out there. Good for him. But so like, like Ryan Fitzpatrick. There you go. I mean, and and people are coming out and laughing. Uh, Dak Prescott, and I get, I get that he only threw twenty three touchdown passes last season. No, that's not the problem. That's not, that's not the laughable part. Is that the laughable part is that they're not going to be able to afford anybody. Well, but that's so the key to success right now in the NFL appears to be get your rookie quarterback in there so that you're not paying him a lot of money, so you have enough money on the cap to run him with weapons. Yeah. Because look how quickly Seattle fell apart once, once they had to pay Russell Wilson. Yeah, they lost uh, their entire defense. They they were What's a defensive Frank team. Clark. They lost. Uh, who else did they lose? Well, they knew they were going to have to pay. They lost Bennett. They lost Bennett. They well. lost Bennett. They lost Dante Fowler by trade mm-hmm. last year, mm-hmm. but because they knew they were going to have to pay Russell Wilson, which I get. And you know, they're Earl Thomas. They lost Earl Thomas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cam Chancellor retired, so a lot of their big money guys aren't there anymore. But if you're going to give anybody that kind of money, I'd give it to Russell Wilson. He's been doing it by himself for a really. So, long but what time. about that article that came out last year that compared the first like three seasons of Dak Prescott Dak to, and Russell Wilson. to Russell Wilson, yeah. and they were virtually identical. But Dak doesn't, like, including doesn't have a Super everything, Bowl. including. Yeah, okay, well, but the, the, the no, team I wasn't a Super Bowl team. No, but It's like not his fault the team wasn't better. <laughs> no, but that's why if Russell Wilson never won a Super Bowl or never got to two Super Bowls, I don't think that we he would have got the $30 million. Yeah. I think that they probably would have waited till this year to see. But, like, so to Eagle's point, like, there's times you watch Dak Prescott and he looks completely incompetent. And then yeah, he's Russell just Wilson guy, always you know? flashes, like, we can't argue that Russell Wilson isn't immensely talented, right? They were both they're they're both exactly the same. They play exactly the same style. They I have a, they have a big arm and they love the check down. But for some reason, when when Russell Wilson does it, it looks like art, and then when Dak Prescott does it, it looks like a homeless man's painting. Okay, can you bring up? Yeah, the me. throw. Well, I need Eagle too. The Dak Prescott <laughs> throw <laughs> to Cole. No, bring it up ver- verbally. Describe it. I got yeah. you to Cole Beasley. Okay. So what happened? I'll tell you. Interception. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably the nicest throw on the run that I've ever seen. And catch. It was a very good catch as well. If we can catch this. Yeah, let me see if I can try and grab it. So, yeah. So, it, it's just like, I get what you're saying. Yet sometimes it looks terrible. But yeah. But then he sh- does this and, like, that guy's worth 30 no, million. No, there's absolutely. There's, there's, there's is he worth 30 million to you? If he signed for yeah, 30 well, million. Everyone's would, worth what the market will pay. Of course, them. yeah. Okay. The market will pay him at least 30 million. I, that's right. Okay. I agree to that. Do you think that people would be. Just as upset, not that one. 
<laughs> that, there it is. There <laughs> That's pretty funny. That, I mean, I've never Fuck, seen look at those that uniforms. Thrown around. Hey, look at, those uniforms are beautiful, man. I mean, if you like bland and boring and things that aren't teal and orange, <laughs> I agree. Teal and orange. <laughs> Des yeah. Bryant, Des Bryant believed he's worth every part of it, and and Des Bryant's a guy who didn't mesh well with how this with how uh, Dak plays. Des uh, Bryant's a guy who aged incredibly quickly, by the way. Incredibly quickly, Des Bryant is a special kind of chunky. I saw an old video where he was returning kicks, and I was like, Des Bryant was a kick returner. Yeah, for the Cowboys at first, yeah, he was a really good one too. He became like a plodding receiver who was never kind of. Open. He was a, he was a very long and thin <laughs> man. Call it before Dak Bryant. Prescott, pressure from Vernon, spins away. Looking, throwing, going end zone. So, now you're going to see the angle from behind him. An unbelievable catch, but he's out of bounds, really and the Giants will win it. No, no, they're going to call it a touchdown. Look at the effort of Beasley laying out. Gets a knee down in the end zone, and the upper part of him goes so, so down. Is that knee going? Look at that right there. He's down. That's a catch. Fast forward. That's going to be a touchdown, folks. We're going to have to take like, a... There's another, there's another angle to that catch, like from behind Dak. Just so type like Dak Prescott from behind. Yeah. See what he gives us. No? See and type it in on U-Porn. you probably find the best one. I, I mean, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. Um, so it was probably one of the best throws I've ever seen. But so, like, just to say that a guy who didn't benefit from him being there at all, like, the just... We saw, the, we saw all the inefficiencies in Dak Prescott's game because... He no longer had Tony Romo just chucking the ball up to him, right? Yeah. Just different kinds of quarterbacks. They play different ways. Uh, Dak Prescott's a lot more careful than Tony. Tony Romo, there's never a throw Tony Romo didn't think he could make, right? Yeah, and he would make them no normally. Absolutely. Yeah. And this thing is, I feel Give like... Give me Dak's uh, stats from last year. Gotcha. I think the best, though, was watching Romo call the two-minute huddle for the Cowboys better than Prescott was doing it on the field. Well, it's his offense. He built that offense. Yeah, and also... He I mean, experience does mean something. Yeah. Right? Twenty-two touchdowns, eight interceptions, ninety-six point nine rating, and three thousand eight hundred eighty-five yards. See that? That's not bad to me. I mean, twenty-two touchdowns. Twenty-five is like a good for that for young quarterback. I feel like right? at this point, twenty-five touchdowns is like a season. It's like two a game almost. You know? Yeah. I just put like you see Pat Mahomes come to the league and throw fifty, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, um, six of those touchdowns were with uh, the were with the uh, Mary Cooper. Yeah. Absolutely. Halfway through the year. Yeah. Well, he's, I mean, and he's a, he's a star receiver and another star receiver. Star, uh, he's a star receiver? I'm just using it for transition. Nice. Um, and another star receiver, Antonio Brown, uh, he's not about that protection game. No. He, uh, he won't wrap his head. Uh, Antonio Brown does not use protection. Yeah, correct. His, his, uh, his helmet just uh, poking out in all sorts of directions. He goes, no dome. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to check your expiry date. He mm -hmm. plays Craig McTavish style. So he wants. So I. He's not, it's not careful. Uh, it's gonna run, run, run and raw, rub and raw. So Antonio Brown is the, is the ultimate tool. Mm. So, what is the ultimate tool? Is it a hoe? Yeah, it's is like it a, a hoe. It's gotta be like is a. It, it has to be a, a hoe or a hammer. No, actually, a screwdriver. A Swiss Army knife, man. You get everything. Utility. So wait, what penis. Are you <laughs> uh, like fuck you, man. Your fucking okay. helmet. He's saying he's saying um, that it doesn't allow him to see. Um, when he's running, the, the, the vision is not the same, and the, the new helmets. Uh, he probably has more of a periphery. Yeah, so he he doesn't like it, and he's saying no. I, get, I there's if he gets hurt, he will sue the NFL for forcing him to use these helmets, even though I don't think he can because the reason is like negotiate with the players' union, of course, so that they they're not up to code. Yeah, you absolutely. know, absolutely. Um, he also w took to, to social media to Raiders ask are gonna people how to yeah, and man, <laughs> and he can't. He can wear his old helmet. He just needs to wear one that's not ten years old. So he can get the same model. Yeah, today's. And it's what's weird is he took the social media. I saw it. Yeah, I retweeted it. And so like, it. shut just doesn't have this lying around. There's not like, hey, we have like 500. Or it's models. Antonio Brown. Make it. Yeah. <laughs> you for sure still have the Make model. Make one for me. Yeah, yeah. That fits the goddamn code. Fucking shit, man. You guys Figure hear the conspiracy out. theory? What's the conspiracy? That he's suffering from CTE dating back to the Vontaze birth. I, I don't. Hit. So I don't think it's necessary. So like you're saying. Yes, he is suffering from CTE. Yes. What you're saying is. Yes. That um, with, your, with your lack of knowledge from medical experience, it's a conspiracy theory where it may or may not be true. Well, no. So the the reason why it's conspiracy theory is because when you go through such a high profile trade, you go through a medical evaluation, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're the Raiders and you basically do your medical with him, he has to pass it. One of the things you check for is definitely concussion syndromes, right? So, but if it, if you have the chance to get Antonio Brown with or without CTE, 
Don't you take them Syndromes anyway? or symptoms? Yes. What's the difference? I never knew the difference. Well, sin- symptom tells you if you have a syndrome, and syndrome is the thing that you have. Nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we have we have a video uh, we have a video eh, of uh, Antonio Bar. We do not. No. You sent it in the chat. Yeah, it's in the chat. <laughs> Which one script. is it? All right. So where he's talking about how his feet were circumcised. Antonio Brown. <laughs> we'll yeah. get to that. We'll get to oh, that in I a gotta second. See this. Secure it up. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but so he's gonna play, right? Of course he's gonna he play. He has to play. <laughs> but he's not actually gonna retire. There's because of the helmet. and the helmets nowadays are lighter. It'd probably be better for him anyway. But they're saying that the that his feet might cause him to be out for regular season games as well. But when you see when you see his feet and, and when you see the helmet and you see all this behavior, is it unreasonable to think CTE or or no, not at trauma? All. You know. It doesn't, it's after not that the hit. reactions of a normal person, and it's not the types of reactions he had earlier in his career. Especially after that hit, too. Imagine a punching bag being flown at your head. Yes, it sounds awful. Yeah, that's exactly what happened to his head. Yeah. In the same helmet he wants to wear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Didn't seem to help him back then. <laughs> Figure, like, Zip. maybe if you were wearing the helmet. Is this? It? Honestly, this. <laughs> Oh, they're just like slicing layers off his feet. You look like you're walking a little funny. Yeah, my feet is pretty much getting circumcised, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah, for like, real. Like circulation? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, with the new skin, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's kind of oh, like okay, a pullback, it was a, right? it was a mistake. <laughs> my feet are yeah. getting circumcised. Yeah, circumcised on my feet, you know. Hopefully my feet born again and I freaking go run faster. I feel sorry for me later. Thank you. So, I, I don't think Antonio Brown knows how cryotherapy works and that you should w- wear footwear. I also don't think he knows how feet work. Yeah. Like Maybe his feet were in pain and he's like, I need more. I need, like, maybe this cryotherapy is going to help my feet. And he just went in there barefoot. Maybe he's like, I need this coating. And they're like, no, you're going to go uh, cryo-freeze them instead. Yeah. You ever take, like, a really cold shower after, like, playing a basketball game I or hate something? cold showers. So, like, I'm, ap- I'm hot shower all the time. After jiu-jitsu, after, like, a really heavy workout or something, I'm really hot, I'll jump in, and the first thing I'll do is I'll blast it cold. It, like, gives you the, <laughs> the shock for, like, 30 Can't seconds. I, I'll run out and scream like a little girl. When I go to spas and stuff, I go into the cold water. Jesus, no. Yeah, I love it. I don't leave the massage chair. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, your massage is over. Yeah, I'm just going to say. Whatever. Yeah. Take more money. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> My card's on the system. Yeah, just just charge. Just charge another <laughs> hour. I'm good. Um, yeah, so that's, I, again, I th- I'm inclined to agree with you. But yet, uh, another NFL receiver makes news in a slow time here. Kenny Stills. Oh, I don't uh, know this story. Called Stephen Ross to, to task. Uh, you've probably heard a little bit about it. So, Stephen Ross is uh, famous for supporting players, supporting minorities. The, the Dolphins have, uh, have famously have a very uh, minority, you know, call what it is, a very black staff. Yeah. Uh, n- not only just football staff, but even running the, the organization. Yeah. He's, he has the Rise Up program yeah. that's uh, meant to help uh, minorities, uh, specifically Latin Americans and, and, and black Americans, uh, to, to help them. Um, to help them through sport and so on and so forth. But Stephen Ross is also, he one of his companies is involved with a Donald Trump charity. And so Kenny Stills took to Twitter to say, you can't have this and say you believe in minorities if you also support Donald Trump. Uh, okay. I, I see, I'm I disagree. Eagle, getting so poli- see, e- Eagle, of course, instantly leans left. But to me, I mean, po- it's a stretch. No, but poli- it's politics, not unreasonable. Politics it's very nec- unreasonable. Politics don't don't necessarily equate um, don't necessarily equate racial issues. They can equate racial issues. Yes. Now, Stephen Ross may have one political leaning, but not be not have that view on race that may be supported by others of that political leaning. Agreed. So, and also, it wasn't Stephen Ross, like, presenting at the function. It was Stephen Ross, one of his companies was involved with, was affiliated to to this fundraiser, gave money as part of the fundraiser. And now, Kenny Stills, still kneels uh, before the games. Yeah. Him and Albert Wilson kneel before every game. Um, and has ever since from about the time of the Kaepernick thing. I, I, okay. don't, I don't remember if it was before or during or before people noticed, that kind of stuff. But he, he now t- in, su- in support of Colin Kaepernick and f- in support of injustice. In, in su- not in, su- in, in support of injustice, but in, in support of bringing awareness to, 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 to injustice. Um, again, I've, I've always said I've, I think the message is important. Absolutely. Um, I don't think it's a lack of patriotism. And we hear 
uh, Popovich saying, it's almost awkward for us to talk about another country, yeah. but um, Popovich said on Kaepernick saying that he, him kneeling was actually an act of patriotism. And if you believe in what, sure. what that flag stands for, you support his right to protest. Absolutely. Um, 100%. And same for Kenny. And, and to, be, to be fair, Stephen Ross, when a lot of owners are trying to make decisions for teams and so on and so forth, he allowed his players to handle it the way they want to handle it, yeah, sure. which is one of the few owners to do that. Yeah, Jerry Jones did it at first and then kind of took it back and said, we're going to deal with it internally. Mm-hmm. The Pittsburgh Steelers decided to do the national anthem inci- indoors. Uh, Charlie Villanueva, remember the whole thing? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so you can do whatever you want, man. If you want to kneel, it's not like you're you're sitting down and but you're scratching your balls. But you can't do whatever you want. I know. It's crazy. Eh? Freedom of speech? Weird. And, well, and what's interesting is you Very look around that, you look around that stadium and people are wearing hats. You look around that stadium, people are sitting down. People are going to get beers. Yeah. People are, and, and How many times have you stood up in your, in, your, uh, in your living room when the National Anthem came on? Zero times. I don't even think... I don't, when I go to Habs games... I don't even think I stand up. I'm in the luxury box when I go to Habs games. And I <laughs> don't Definitely stand don't stand up. No, but it's like uh, there was one reporter from Dallas. I remember him saying it. He's like, we're complaining about a guy kneeling during the, sta- during the, the national anthem when we use our, our, uh, our flag as bathing suits, as underwear, as uh, towels to wipe our genitals, you know, like mm, a bunch of I have a bathing suit, actually. I don't American flag, maybe the bathing suit. There you suit. go, yeah. So we disrespect the flag in so many different ways. What he did was not disrespectful to the flag. I still maintain, and I'm, I'll probably take a lot of heat for this, he didn't know, really know what he was doing. And then after Correct. the fact, he came up and said, he's like, yeah, you know what? I did it for this. No, I think he knew what he was doing. I don't think he knew like the backlash. Like he, I don't think oh, he knew. Yeah, yeah. You can't, I don't think you he can't anticipate cause, what happened to him. No I don't way. think he knew it would cause him to be. No way. Uh, to lose his job, basically. And don't forget, he started this in a very different political regime where uh, race wasn't as tied to politics. So to, to Eagle's point, actually. To Eagle's point it was just There was just a shooting or something, so he decided to, s- to kneel. Yeah. which Because well, cops, were, cops were on paid leave to, for killing people. He used to sit during the national anthem, and then after discussing with a veteran, the veteran said, actually, if you kneel, it's a better yeah, exactly, respect. Yeah, exactly. And then it, that became the most disrespect, even though after discussion with the veteran... They were like, well, no, this, a lot of times kneeling is a sign of respect. You even do it in church, I think. You even do it when you're proposing to your wife. It's true. You even Maybe I was disrespecting the flag. Yeah. So I got to take this off. Uh, it's, just a, it's just another way to get to complain about something. But you know it's August because we're still talking about Kaepernick. Oh, um, Rogers Cup just passed. Nice. Uh, I, went. There I went a couple We have video times. here? Or what's the no video? Yeah, no we video. do. We have a tweet. Oh. It's just a Twitter of the. It's a. Tw- is a video. Trainer. Yeah, yeah we've the got girl, a problem the, uh, here. The, the Toronto chick. She won. Video has come out. So to Serena Williams. Take a look at Serena uh, Williams. She decided to knock the team in the finals. So she started. I don't know what the Uh-oh. injury was there. She had spasms in her back. So uh, I think it is Bianca. Serena and in screen. tears. And she, uh, she came I didn't see what. But it's, it's, it's that she was kind of funny. Anything. Is that you can tell on Jessica she's trying to hold back her smile because she realizes that she won. Yeah, I mean, but it's yeah, like mixed, right? Like, over. yeah, you're it's like, not like, how sorry, you win, but also yeah, she's yeah. trying to hold back her smile. Sure? Yeah, it's like it's kind of it's, it's bittersweet, you know. But matches. Like the thing is, like, Serena came back was like, four months after delivering her baby, okay. and so like you can't expect her even now to be. Physically fit. No, your hormones are going all over the place. And the fact that she's like still playing at this level, you just can finish the game. Yeah. There's also the thing that she's aging. Remember, Tiger Woods started feeling back issues and stuff in his 30s. Yeah. You know, she's she's kind of been dominating for most of her life. Yeah, all she's, of it, kind of thing. Yeah, like, like, well, I mean, professionally, let's say, like, what, since she was 16? I have a friend that work was really into tennis, and I think he said it best, which is that you don't play tennis to get in shape. You play tennis when you're in shape. And mm. so he's saying that she came back too early and that mm. actually she might actually risk an injury because of, I mean, the extra weight she's carrying post-pregnancy and everything, right? Yeah. Like, conf- no, on, in tennis, you. when you're running Ooh. side to side on Ooh. your knees, like Serena the knee pressure. Serena Files are coming after you. It's... It's a thing, though. You can, like, imagine, imagine, just imagine, she, like, buckles her knee or something because she presses and the weight transfer's weird or whatever. It's, you're playing, it's a different physique. Absolutely. Okay, so we all need to take shots at Eagle so that if we get attacked, if we get attacked on social media, we just deflect to him and we can yeah. use these clips. How about the extra weight in your face? 
I think the thing we're missing in this whole thing is not even the, no, the Serena Williams thing. It's attack. It's the fact that Jeannie Bouchard, after all this happens, <laughs> stupidest tweet ever, what saying she, write? she says, "I guess I could have won." Oh no, yeah, you, sorry. No, you no. couldn't no. have. You haven't made it to pass it. That's part of Ironically, that's part Bianca of beat her. She's beaten. And Bianca's beaten her like three times now. Yeah, so not even close. She gets wiped. I'm, I'm looking at her record now. She lost now. In the first round, dude. Yeah, I'm not even Bianca. just not not even now. I'm looking at uh, her past tournaments. She's barely ever got out of the qualifiers. So, so even though she and lost she in the first round, even though all she was never going to face Serena, she could have won. Yo, Terry, I can beat you in jujitsu. Yeah. I basically, it's I basically just, beat it's you. just a salty right, yeah, yeah, ass yeah, tweet. It's based a on, salty based ass on never tweet. having fought you and never will fight you, I, I basically could beat you. Who says we're never going to fight? Maybe we'll have to do it for money. But I'll do it for money. I'm just trying to figure out. I'm just trying to figure out like what what has Jeannie Bouchard ever done? Nothing. She got naked a couple times. There's that. Also, she, I mean, she's a pro tennis player. On the swimsuit. But just calendar. not a successful one. But how is she any different from Anna Kornikova? She, was, Kornikova she had a 50 minutes. Was way, was way Anna Kornikova was very good. At one point, yeah. And she was a fucking missile. A rocket. <laughs> but, um... Like, I, some of the people that she's yeah. lost to recently, she she lost yesterday, Bouchard lost in the, in the round of 32 yesterday to some random person called Babos. And then, Canadian Open, loses to Andrescu. <laughs> Just loses loses to another unranked player at the Washington Open. Just watch it. Loses in the Ladies Open to another unranked player. She just keeps losing to unranked players. Considering she, you don't like her, you know a lot about her career. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't like her. Yeah, that's you fair. Don't. But that's she's hot though. Would you Would you drink her bath water? No, I, I wouldn't drink. That, that's your expression. I still don't understand what it means. It what's, means what's I would, like, if what's she a, took a bath. And, and then, then you got out. I don't think you can drink bath water. I think I like you choke on it. It's I just water. It. Yeah, but it's all germs and that's there's what I'm all saying. That's why. Soap. That's why soap it's too? disgusting. Because I'm. So, so what's, what's, what's like your thing? Like, like so Terry says, uh, you bath water. You you would drink your bath water. What's the thing you would say to convince no, me? I can't. Uh, sucking on toes. Hmm? Okay. You, you'd suck mm-hmm. on her toes. No, not her. I would. got to win. She got to win. Make a hair doll of her straight hairs. That's yeah, weird. It's not intrusive because she left it behind. What does Eagle say? Eagle? Uh, drag my ball through a mile of broken glass so I can smell your fart through a telephone. Wow, you're oh, pathetic. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad. Where's that's that from? Bad. I feel like it's from I somewhere. don't know, but it's so good. It's <laughs> so stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, anyway, so I went this year. I, I've yeah, been, you were I, live reporting. Uh, I go, uh, I've been a few times, So, but I, I had a lot of fun this year. Tima I, Babos. Tamea. Tamea Babos. <laughs> So then you get the name and you're not sure if it's right. Awesome. It's totally right. August, boys. August. Yeah. Next. When's football start? I don't know. Next is break. And when we're back, Duke might be here. He might not. But we will have rapid fire. I guess he's not going to be here. And we're back from nothing because we didn't have to dumb. set up an interview this week. We'll, we're going to have one next week. I'm working on getting yeah, okay, cool. Andy Mack back for, oh, fantasy football. for fantasy football. Yeah, he's a big Perfect. fantasy dude. Get it in before the drafts, right? Absolutely. Well, this was this a candied apple? I didn't actually see it. So right. it was this. It was a food truck. and I don't know where it was, but I was at the gym, and it, they were just showing it on the, on the screen, and uh, I don't know what language it was in, but there was a guy. It was uh, candied apples um, put in a cup, uh, cooled potatoes put on top. No, sorry, the potatoes. Then you put the candied apples on top, and then they they slice like this hot cheese on it. Oh, like a raclette. Like yeah, a what? Yeah, like a like a raclette plate. I guess so. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I've seen. It that. looked unreal, and then there was a guy eating it, and it looked exactly like candy. So I messaged him from the hot sauce account, and he said it wasn't him. And that he doesn't like Putin. And he doesn't like Putin. So either we fight him, we're gonna fight him, or we have him on and we talk to him. You again. and I have both had Putin today. Yeah, we did. We had it together. We, it both, look, we both feel terrible. Absolutely. <laughs> You're sweating weirdly. I cannot wait to fall asleep. I'm playing golf at 7 in the morning tomorrow. Mm, I'm playing golf at 4. Tomorrow Friday. morning? Friday. Four in the morning? Night. No, afternoon. Imagine playing start golf at 4 in the morning. Start my weekend. But before I can start my weekend, we got to go to rapid fire. This time, Eagle, I hope, you're, I hope you read the, the topics at least once. No improvement from Duke. All right. <laughs> 
Walk hard. Walk on Browns rookie Damon Sheehy Giuseppe oh, scores yeah. a 86-yard punt return touchdown and his first ever NFL game. This coming from someone who didn't make any of the NCAA schools mm-hmm. in neither basketball, track, or uh, football. Went across the the uh, the U.S. and Canada trying to get into any leagues. Didn't make it into the Arena Football League either. Literally did a bunch of research with a friend at one point. Showed up at the Browns training camp. Said the right things to the right person. It happens to be the VP of personnel. Walked into the camp because he just seemed confident and got an invite and now has a pro contract. And we have footage of the actual clip itself. Yeah, I was going to say, you got to see the celebration because you, it goes to show how... Winner, um, the only answer that I can come up with, the one that's really stuck with me, not from a highlight perspective, but it just really hit me in the heart. That's Brown's rookie wide receiver, Damon Sheed, Sheed Giuseppe. I'm going to say D. Sheezy is his new nickname. While his 86-yard punt return against the Redskins on Thursday was an incredible display of fit, of speed and athleticism and agility. Which is great vision, too. What was more impressive was a story off the field which led him there. Just four months ago, this man was sleeping outside a gym and all the time, sometimes him, in the gym in Miami, yeah. um, trying to get a tryout. And he actually did. He worked it out with the Cleveland Browns by making his way into the facility and basically lying, saying he knew Browns vice president of player personnel, Alonzo, Alon- Alonzo Highsmith. Now, he got in. He ran the 40. He ran a 4-3-8. He caught oh, wow. some footballs. He impressed the scouts, and he landed somewhat of a summertime contract. And then he gets in the game. This is crazy. Ball lands in his stomach and he takes it 86 yards. Now, the story is unbelievable because I started to do a deep dive on this. So, that's that's so he, this is not the first time he lies his way in. He also did it when applying for the track and field program at one of the, I think, University of Arizona, uh, where he went for the tryout, and they said, okay, well, we'll call you and let you know, and they never called him. And so instead of taking that as a, well, no. they, I didn't make the team, he just like, well, they didn't tell me I didn't make the team, and he would just show up and go to the gym and work out, and eventually the guy's like, are you on the track team? He's like, well, I guess. And he was on the track team. There you go. I remember in uh, football one day, if they would cut you, they would call you. Mm-hmm. So if they didn't call you, if they didn't communicate with you, it means you have to report back. Yeah. So Makes sense. I got a lot of phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to say quickly, Eagle, he was sleeping in a gym in Miami. Antonio Brown uh, famously uh, was homeless in Miami at one point in, in his high school years. So it makes you think. The fuck is going on in Miami? Yeah, he took out a credit card specifically to travel around to the, all the different schools and max it out. Literally, the last money he had was on the flight to uh, Cleveland. That's crazy. That's crazy. Eagle. Yes, it's you. Nice. <laughs> Uh, crack birds. Shy words pulled over because cops thought that bird shit was cocaine. Crack birds. Would you sniff shit? Right. Oh subscribe. God, Don't subscribe there. Subscribe to Hot Sauce Sports <laughs> YouTube channel. There we go. Thank you uh, very much, YouTube. Remember to sub- <laughs> subscribe, <laughs> like, and comment, ideally. But subscribe is the most important thing to Hot Sauce Sports. Why is it always oh my God. So just pause it. Well, this music right here, you know what this music means? Why are you in the top five It means it's Hot Sauce time. Five. It's time for everyone to subscribe. To Hot Sauce Sports. Absolutely. Okay, you go. The music's playing again. Remember to subscribe. Hot Sauce Sports. It's because YouTube decides to fucking reload the videos for me. Grammarly no, I don't want a commercial. What's wrong with you? They okay. didn't pay us, Eagle. Grammarly.com did not pay us, but we do. Ah, oh, there it is. Grammarly, if you'd like to pay us. The now that we've played your ad. The sound is on. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds on. What's the so white stuff on the front of your hood, so man? This, this bird shit. Bird shit? Yeah. That ain't bird shit. Dispatch, I promise you that's bird doo doo. I promise you it's not, though. I swear to God that's bird doo doo. Well, I swear to God it's not because I just tested it and that turned pink. You can see it on the windshield. That's not bird poop. I swear to God that's bird doo doo. That's not bird poop. I, I swear. Bad. I swear that's to God, bird, dude. that's a lot of bird shit, man. I tried to clean it last night at the gas station. You can, st- I can still wipe it off. It's bird doo doo. Okay. Like, all right, okay. All right. I don't, I don't. What's it? What? What, what is it? Pink? <laughs> Poor kid, man. So the stress is what do, do uh do birds typically shit powder? I mean, so I don't know. Yeah, what kind of substance was on his window? I think they're just trying to fuck him over, man. Yeah. Conspiracy theorists to me is saying that they're trying to fuck him over. It, it, it seems that way. Although the cop, I mean, I had read the, the article. I hadn't seen the clip. The cop actually seems somewhat apologetic. Like, I tested his yeah. pink. What do you want me to do? Well, use your head. Like, you're a cop. You should know what cocaine looks like. It doesn't look like bird shit. It, that, just because it, it goes pink, it means there's a chemical in there. That's yeah. Maybe the coke was doing Maybe the well, bird was doing for coke. For example, I recently took a flight. I yeah. got pulled over by, by Homeland Security. They had to check my bag doing coke. because it was an expl- uh, explosive residue on my bag. I've never touched an explosive in my life. What explosive residue? Residue? 
but I touched something that chemically is similar, I guess, to something. You know That's what I mean? That's crazy. Yeah. You shit your pants away. Uh, no, I mean... I would get I, scared I, of that shit. I mean, I'm more scared of touching an explosive device, which is why I know no, I'd never no. touched one. Uh, I'm more scared of getting arrested for not touching it. Yeah, absolutely. S- slip and slide. Evan Lazar reports the Patriots are having players and coaches dive on loose balls while no Tom video. Brady sprays them with a hose. There's no video of this, unfortunately. I would <laughs> love to see Bilicek diving on a loose ball and then Tom Brady just standing right behind him with a hose going... Tsh- yeah, um... Tsh- Evan Lazar, who who uh, who's on a Patriots podcast, covers the, the Patriots, a beat writer. Um, he said, unfortunately, of course, because the Patriots, you don't get, they don't release any footage. Um, so it's interesting because the Patriots typically have said that you know the, the, the reputation is that they don't have any fun when you're when you're in that locker room. Uh, maybe dispelling that a little bit, uh, or is this just Belichick losing his mind? I think it's uh, uh you're trying to keep it fun, you know. Belichick's last year. He's going to retire after this. You think so? I think so. So you say that today the Patriots and the Titans had a joint practice, and apparently Belichick sent all the rookies to go sing happy birthday to Titans coach uh, Mike Rabel. And what ended up happening was Rabel, to thank the rookies, he broke down their huddle with them. So, And there's video evidence of it, too. It's really cute. Rabel? Yeah. yeah. Mike Rabel. <laughs> it took me a second. Rabel, like Rabel. porn star? No. Whenever you, whenever you don't know so Mike Vrabel, the future coach of the P-Chain, name, just say the porn star, and then like you embarrass whoever you're talking to. Like, My mom hates it when I do that. <laughs> uh, you guys are going to have to help me on this I, one, do, ironically. Do put this in. Because choke, choke job, job, but I don't know what it is. I also don't know what it is. So you just wrote choke job? Like, like, you can look. There's no description. After I told him, make sure you write it in the description. That's <laughs> That was fast. And then last one. Hey, AOC. Yeah, you know me. So, uh, Alexandra Orcario Cortez. Oh, crazy, oh, crazy, oh, Cortez. Oh, crazy, oh, And uh, Dave Portney of Barstool Sports. Uh, oh, they right. got into a Twitter feud. <laughs> the star. Argue, the yes. <laughs> arguing about unions. Um, long story short, there's been some talk about the Barstool Sports employees unionizing or trying to talk no, it about was, it. No, it wasn't that. It was the Ringer employees have been talking about unionizing. The, no, they think they got a union, the Ringer, on the Ringer. I mean, I think they became unionized because there's a Twitter account called The Ringer Union. So, mm-hmm. Par- Portney uh, posted Portnoy. his. Portnoy? Portnoy, <laughs> sorry. He uh, posted an article that he wrote about it, basically saying unions are fucking stupid, in which case, a union lawyer replied to it saying if any of the Barstool employees want to uh, l- potentially explore this, reach out to him. In which Portnoy then replied, if any of you reply to him, you're fired on the spot. In which case, AOC Fine. replied, well, right there, you've already violated labor code. In which case, he replied, A, debate me, yo. And yeah. that's where it's currently at. Um, I don't think she'll debate him. Um, I, don't I don't think she hasn't debated anybody. And so the thing is, the thing is, there's also a thing where, like, you got to know where a dude's joking around being humorous. Of course. He may not believe in unions. That said, like, Barstow at this point is a multi-million dollar industry. If they were to unionize, he'd probably hate it. Like that probably is his feelings. Well, why would they? But unionize? I don't think he would fight it. No. Well, that's the other thing is, media members need to be hungry. I know Mina Kimes of ESPN yeah. uh, talked about recently when she started ESPN. She took every assignment. She said yes to everything. She never took a sick day because everyone else is always coming for your shit. Yeah. And I feel like that's the best way to do media. You need you need to be hungry. You need to want it. You need to get out there. So. The idea that someone might be unionized and, and might not feel the drive to do anything extra, yeah. might not feel the drive to work 60-hour work weeks, I don't know if that gets you your best results. And the guys at Barstool doing, doing great work, it doesn't even seem like they want to unionize, to be honest. Uh, yeah, it's funny because you see all the, you see all the Barstool guys like responding and stuff, and it's mm-hmm. fucking hilarious. No, we see the personalities. Maybe like the camera guys or whatever, like the techs. No, they don't give a shit I mean, the about techs that. don't matter anyway, right? The what? The tech, the tech guys don't matter anyway. Nah, they're not even on camera. Yeah. Okay, okay. The there? Like Eagle. Fuck you, man. This is where we're supposed to have a third Pokemon topic. Ass yeah, the third shit. thing is uh, we 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 have the we're supposed to have the videos for uh, Hard Knocks queued up, so Terry and I can react to them because we haven't seen the episodes. So However, we review the episodes. We only have episode one on the Zone in Canada. We, we actually don't, don't even have it. It's on Quebec. YouTube. The episode one's on YouTube. It's also on the Zone, but they haven't posted episode two, so Wait, we, don't, we don't know what it is. On the Zone, uh, yeah, it is. I checked. Wasn't I, there? It's there. Okay. So, but like, uh, look, I don't watch it anyway, so I don't care. It was boring but just but to start but off. Yeah, first so Duke, was Duke loaded shit. clips for us to react to. But those are clips from week two. So? Okay. We're still going to react to it. There's literally one clip. Okay, let's react to one clip. Literally, it's one clip. Jesus Christ. I asked him for three. I asked him for three. It's not even that good. Yeah, we got we to gotta get, get Duke fixed for next week. Yeah, we got to fix him. 
There we go. Get him some of that bird shit. You ready? Yeah. Okay. But more than anything, I want better execution. Are we clear on that? I want better fucking execution. Like but more than bad. anything, I want she better execution. execution Are we clear on that? I want Duke better Duke. fucking execution Yeah, Duke But more than anything, I want better execution we got. No, Hard Knocks does not exist on uh, The Zone Yes, it does Nope I watched it I'm on looking The at Zone search. Maybe they removed the episode after it aired mm, No, it's there You're just not looking properly I searched Hard Knocks so you go up? under the NFL Game Pass category, and then you click on the Hard Knocks in the All Shows category, and then oh, you yeah, have 2019 Raiders Hard Knocks yeah, Episode 1. Perhaps, perhaps that's something we could have done off air. So when you see this clip, d- does that make you take John Gruden seriously? Yeah. Oh, my God. I, it looks like I would never want to work for this person. He's a joke. I see that, and I'm like... It, it, you know, if well, I'm you've work- never worked for greatness. So... Is Brian Billick greatness? Because he has the same resume as Brian Billick. Won Super Bowl. Yeah, Brian Billick is a good coach. I mean, okay, but not greatness. No, he's a good you didn't say great coach. Yeah. You literally said good. But John Gruden is like a good coach. <laughs> <laughs> a good coach. <laughs> I'm just acting like everybody. Yo, John Gruden. He's a good coach. <laughs> but that's it. I feel like he gets he gets credit just for having been around for a while and happened to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, had a great defense, made Brad Johnson look like an MVP. Absolutely, like and, the, and the center uh, had a bipolar breakdown yeah. uh, for the Oakland Raiders. And the Coach Callaway, uh, Coach Callahan didn't change any of the audibles from the previous season. That's crazy. Genius. Um, That's fucking crazy. Yeah, man. yeah. but the thing is, I see that, and like I, that doesn't make me want to watch Hard Knocks. It, it looks crazy. like every cliched football, like sports movie of all time. Like, yeah, I agree. I don't want to watch it, it the same way. I didn't want to watch that's the blind what it side. Is, though. That's why l- Last Chance U is good. This is good. It. I can't watch any of those things. Last Chance U is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I can't watch any of those things. He's not there anymore. The white guy from Compton. My coach. Which guy? The I, I don't know the show. It doesn't help me. <laughs> so there was two, there, there's two. there been four seasons, I think, of Heart mm-hmm. of uh, Last Chance U. The t- first two seasons was in East Mississippi. The second two seasons was in Independence, Can- Independence Kansas. And it's basically, you don't know anything what it's about at all? So it's about kids who basically get kicked, get kicked out of D1 schools. They get recruited to these junior college schools. They stack their teams and they win their championships, right? Mm-hmm. But the coaches are like the, the like the, the main attraction on the show. And the first year, they just had this uh, this freaking little fire bullet of a fat guy just swore all the time and broke his clipboard every game. Mm-hmm. And then they Tons had another keys. guy. Then the next guy that, that came in for the, for the, s- the third and fourth season, he... Uh, was this white guy from Compton. So he, he kind of has like this don't fuck with me attitude. He played it. He had a cup of coffee with the Chiefs. Uh, he played in the Arena Football League. And so he's a little bit of like a, of a hard ass, you know, but he's very entertaining. And that's why the show is good, not because of the kids. Hmm. One of the kids, actually, he's on. he was on the first episode of Hard Knocks. He was on uh, the, the first season of uh, Last Chance U. And he's the guy, if you watch the episode, he got cut. He got cut. On the same... Show on the same episode. You don't even see him. At one point, he just like, oh, my foot hurts. I can't play anymore. I, I can't practice. So they're like, okay. But you see the next next video? The next... Uh, yeah, the it's Gruden basically saying, we don't want people who give up on practice. Yeah. And then he's cut. We cut him. And then you see like there's a video of like... And they brought take, in... Uh, taking what's his, his number name? off. Uh, see, I, love it, but, like, I don't know. So the, the guy didn't practice because of his foot. And oh, John, big tough John Gruden says, uh, we don't want guys taking practice off. No, where's but he, no, where's but he's Antonio Brown been? Oh, no, his foot hurts. No, but no, he was already on a tight leash. No, but he's known point. to be a lazy kid, and he is a lazy kid. Even on the show, he was like just like he's so a very good player. So why would you bring him in? Because he's a very good player. But as soon as you have a short leash when you're in the NFL, there's 90 guys there. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna be the one to complain about your foot. Yeah, you know what I mean. My point is that coaches say stuff like that, but the thing is, you're not one of the top five of the 90, so you're expendable. No, whereas Antonio Brown is not what expendable, no, regardless of the situation. What they're saying is that he could have pl- he could have practiced. The the doctors cleared him. He's like, no, I'll just like ride the bike. Like he was being lazy. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to practice. But again, if Antonio Brown wants to ride the bike, if Antonio Brown it's wants very to sleep with wife, it's also he's, he's starting not, on Sunday. He's not a rookie. He's been playing. He shows what he can do. You know what he can do on the field, mm-hmm. right? And he, you know he's gonna bring it. It reminds me. It just reminds me of Pat Riley was once asked, uh, "Would Dwayne Wade play?" If he hit you in the face, and he says, "Oh, I tell him to use his left hand so he can still shoot." That's a good one. I like that. So that's it. Shows to show you talent rules, uh, it to rules in sports world as it does in this podcast. I've been Pease, you've been Terry, we have been Hot Sauce Sports.
You've been listening to Hot Sauce Sports.